All right. Hopefully you guys can see this well. Oh, a little too low. Right there. Okay, so here is the plan for today. Using my trusty little whiteboard here. Stole it from my daughter. Um, and so what I want to do as people kind of stroll in here, what I'm going to do is I want to talk about baseball situations. And I just threw my marker at you. Okay, so I want to talk baseball situations. Um, we're going to start off by talking. This is going to be all baseball talk, okay? Um, we're going to start off by talking infield depths. Then we'll talk about some different situations. I really want to explain to infielders especially because I get a lot of questions all the time about where I should play defensively, right, regardless of your position. Uh, depending on the situation, how many guys are on, speed of the runner, all that stuff, the positioning that you play is going to change. And so we'll talk about some catcher stuff also. Um, and so if you are, uh, ho hopefully, you guys will be interested in this. I think this is a really, really important part of the game. And especially now where really nobody can get out and play baseball. Uh, these are the type of things I think it's a good time to start to go over some of these things, right? A lot of us haven't been outside for a long time. If you're from our part of the country in Massachusetts, you probably haven't been on a field for some of you probably haven't been on a field since the fall, maybe even the summertime. So it's been a really, really long time. Thank you, Lewis. I appreciate that. Um, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. So obviously we're live right now, so you guys can send questions in. But I might not answer a couple questions for a while, for a little bit here until we go through some of this stuff. And then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay? So let's start off. First thing I want to talk about is... Just regular defense, okay? So thinking about nobody on base, all right? Let's start out. We'll go around the infield, okay? Let's start out with first base. Now, just so you guys know, I know you all know what a baseball field looks like, okay? But here we've got the dirt. Let me draw, um, let me draw a little mound for us here. Oh, let's put it right there. Okay, good enough. Maybe not in the exact right spot, but close enough. Okay, so dirt, mound, obviously, or excuse me, grass, mound, here's the dirt right here, and then we've got the outfield right here, okay, just so everyone understands kind of what the field looks like. So let's start with first base. One of the biggest problems I see with first baseman is that first baseman, if this is first base, first baseman play like right here, Okay, can you guys see that mark right there? Do I have to make it a little bit bigger? Do I have to bring it in a little bit closer? Let me bring it in a little bit closer. I don't know if you guys can see that. There we go. Right there. Okay, so first baseman. I always see first baseman playing like right here. Six inches away from the bag. Okay, and so as a first baseman, first baseman gets so caught up in, oh, I have to be able to get to first base. Well, yeah, you have to be able to get to first base, but that doesn't mean you play one foot off the bag and one foot deep, okay? So I need to get some depth because I am an infielder. If I'm playing one foot off the bag and I'm, I'm right here, well, anything hit this way is going to get past me, okay? So I'm looking, essentially, I want to try to get as far away from the bag and as deep as I can while making sure that I can get to the bag, okay? So I wrote down a couple things. These are some easy things to keep in mind, okay? So if a left-handed hitter is up, think about this. From first base, take approximately eight steps towards the line or down the line, and then about six steps towards second base, okay? So it's eight and then six, all right? It's going to put you somewhere right about there, okay? So I'm here, I can cover ground, right? Now I'm taking a lot of hits away, but I can also get the first base. Everyone got that? All right, and I should, it's not that I have to sprint 100%, but I, I should have to run a little bit. I'm not walking or doing a light jog. If I can do a light jog, I'm probably not deep enough. All right, everyone got that? Now, that's with a lefty up, okay? If a righty comes up, well, then I can now go a step or two this way and a step or two in that way, okay? Because if a righty is up, 
well then I'm going to want to move towards the second base bag, right? And I'll, is this, this might look reversed for you guys. I'm not sure if this looks reversed the way I'm drawing it, but I want to move towards the second base bag because a right-hander's up. Right-hander is going to hit the ball this way more often, right? He's going to pull the ball more often, so I'm going to get over. The reason I come up a little bit is because when I'm playing first base, for every step that I go away from first base, I have to move in. If I just move away and I don't move in, well, then I get further and further and further and further away from the bag, and now I might get into a spot where I can't get back to first base. Does that make sense for everybody? So for every step over as a first baseman, move a step in. All right. Okay. So that's first base. All right. So now we've got the first baseman. Let's just say, oh, we'll just put him over here for now. Okay. We got a righty up. There you go. Okay. Second base. Now for both middle infielders, this is, this is important because I get this question all the time. Where do I stand? Okay. Where, where do I go when there's nobody on? Well, this is an easy way to remember it. Okay. So if you're the shortstop or the second baseman, I want you to do this. I want you to take the corner of the plate, all right? So take the corner of the plate that's furthest away from you. So if you're the shortstop over here, I want you to take the corner of the plate. I want you to draw a line, okay? That line is going to go from there through there. Okay, draw that line. Now, if you're a second baseman, take it from this corner, draw it through the edge of the mound right there. Okay, so you, you see those two lines? So you're taking it, if you're the shortstop, you're taking it from the outer part, the furthest part from the plate, you're going to go through the mound where the dirt meets the grass all the way through. If you're the second baseman, take it from the furthest point of the plate, draw a line through the edge of the mound all the way through, okay? You're going to base everything off of those two lines, all right? So now let's go to, let's go to second base, okay? Now if it's a righty up, all right, so I've got, for a right-handed hitter, you're going to be one step towards first base from that line, okay? So here we are, second base, right here, one step puts me right about there, okay? Everyone got that? So there's the line, I go one step to the left towards first base, and that's where I should be pretty much at for a righty. Now. If you get a hitter that's a real pull hitter, yeah, you might move a little bit pull, okay? You get someone that's a slap hitter, yeah, maybe you move a little bit this way, okay? For a lefty, I can move this way, okay? So for a lefty, I can typically take like three more steps over here, all right? Now this isn't exactly, my, my you have to uh, pardon my drawing, like this isn't exactly the scale. That, that looks like it might be a humongous mound right there. So this line might actually be like a smidge more this way in real life, okay? So don't worry about the drawing. Just go by what I'm telling you. When you draw that line, you're gonna be one step to the left of that line. When a lefty comes up, move another three steps over, okay? Make sense? I know it might look a little bit far on the, draw, on the drawing, okay? So that's with, again, that's with nobody on base, okay? Now, what I used to do at second base, let me draw this again. When I played second base, if I had a lefty up, okay, and, and, and let me back up for a second because this is one thing I see a lot. Left-handers, okay, are typically going to, especially big middle or left-handers, are going to pull the ball a lot. So again, I want to be three steps over. Now, one thing you can do to cheat, depending on how the field is, is that sometimes I would back up even. I'd be like a step or two on the outfield grass. All right. So if he's, especially if he's a slow guy, so it's not like a shift where you see in the major leagues where they put the guy like way, way out here, but I don't have to be, oh my God, I got so many markers in my hand right now. Put this marker down. I don't want to be in here. I want to give myself some room, move back. Okay. So let's put, let's put us right about there. Okay. Now, when you go over to the shortstop position, it's pretty much the exact same thing. So let's see. So if it's, let's say it's a, a left-hander up, all right? So you're gonna go, basically, there's your line. You're gonna go, same thing, about one step towards third base. That's your spot for a normal left-handed hitter. 
Again, if he's more of a pull hitter, you might come over here a little bit. So this is, again, a starting point for straight up guys. He's more of a pull hitter, yeah, maybe you come over a little bit, all right? Now, if he's a right-handed hitter as a shortstop, well, you do the same thing you did over here, right-handed, just take three steps that way. And now you're playing right there. Everyone got it? Okay, so let's draw him in here and then we'll pause for questions for a second. Anyone have a question when it comes to uh, positioning so far? Does that make sense? Does this make sense, drawing those lines through? All right. If I see a question, I'll, uh, I'll stop and I'll, I'll talk about it. All right. But this is really important because the thing with shortstop and second base is that, or really with any position, but especially here, because when you're playing first or third, you have the bases that kind of be like, okay, there's the base and I'm right near the base. When you get out here, sometimes you get far away from the base. So you're, I always would be like, hmm, am I, I don't know. I'm just going to guess. I'm going to kind of go out here and go by feel. But if you, again, if you draw these lines or you just, you're not going to draw it obviously, but you're just going to look through that point right there. And now you've got a spot that you're basically going to be in the same spot all the time. And then you make your adjustments from there. Uh, should short ever be on the grass? Okay, so um, I would probably not ever start on the grass just because the further you get away from first base, then, you know, longer the throw. So as a second baseman, you can cheat in the grass because you, you have a really small, a short throw. But if you're playing shortstop, I mean, I don't think you're going to want to be out there. And if you've got a weaker arm, especially at a lower level, then maybe you squeeze in a little bit depending on the speed of the runner. All right. Um, okay. Let's see what else now. Let's go over to third base. Third base is the same thing. I wish I would stop throwing this uh, eraser all over the place. Third base is the same thing as first base. So we already kind of talked about it. Okay, so if there's a right-handed hitter up, then you're going to take eight steps up the line, six steps over, going to put yourself someplace right about there. All right, let me erase this. All right, so there you are. You're eight steps up and you're six steps over, all right? Um, now, it does depend if it's a bunting situation, right? If it's a guy that can really run, well, then you're going to probably be right in here on the edge of the grass, all right? And so you need to know one of the things when it comes to being a third baseman is understanding the game situation, the speed of the runner, uh, and knowing if I should be in on a bunt or not. And sometimes it's hard if you've never played against a team before, but you need to make sure that you don't just fall asleep and you're always playing in the same spot. Now, sometimes what I would do when I was playing third base is I would show the hitter something and then I would get out of it once the pitcher starts to get into his windup. So say we've got like a guy that can bunt. Well, I'd come in here and I would play here and I would let him see me right there, right? And then when the pitcher went into the windup, I would sneak back quickly and get myself, you know, an extra five, 10 feet of, of uh, range. And he wouldn't realize that I'm moving back. Okay. I would never really play back here. And then, I mean, I guess you could, if you're a great third baseman, you could play back here, say, oh yeah, go ahead and bunt. And then as the pitcher goes in the lineup, come up here. But I never really did that. I'd always, I'd mess around with them. I'd start in here, say, no, you can't bunt them right here. And then I would push back. All right. So I just mix that up. Uh, but you have to know who could bunt on the other team. And again, usually like a one, a, a leadoff hitter, a nine guy, if you don't have any scouting report, that should help you. Um, all right, what else do we need to talk about? Oh, now a lefty's up. All right, so a lefty up, all you're going to do is you're going to just push over this way. So if you're eight and six on a righty, well, on a lefty, you're just going to come over about two more steps. Um, obviously, again, because a lefty's going to probably hit the ball this way. The one thing I see that happens with lefties a lot is that the third baseman, first, they play way too close to the line. And when a lefty comes up, they stay here. But then the shortstop goes, oh, a lefty's up. So the shortstop moves over here. And so the shortstop's playing here, and the third baseman's playing there. And if he hits anything right here, it's an automatic hit, right? But I want to take away, like, very, very, very rarely is a left-handed hitter going to hit a ball over the third base bag. Like, it, it does not happen very much at all. Um, and so I'm taking away, I want to be off the bag. I want to be over here so I can take away those hits where, you know, if a lefty goes the other way, he's probably going to go somewhere here again. He's not going to go right down the line, most instances. So I'm taking away another two steps, okay? And again, if he's a, if he's a faster runner, 
well then I'm going to probably come in here at some point. I don't have to be in on the grass, unless it's a real bunter. If he's a bunter, then I'm in here. But if it's a little bit of a faster running, maybe as I move over, maybe I move up just a tiny, tiny bit. Take away like the swinging bunt. All right? Okay. So let's see. What else do we need? All right, so I think that covers everything. Any questions when it comes to just straight up Nobody on base, defensive positioning. I don't think most people even think about this. I don't think most coaches even really break it down. I think most coaches just go, yeah, the shortstop knows where to stand. The second baseman knows where to stand, right? But there's adjustments to be made depending on if it's a righty or a lefty, depending on if he's a little bit more of a pull guy or an opposite field guy, depending on how fast he is. All right? Outfielder positioning, we'll get to that in a little while. All right. Okay, so now let's go to double plays, all right? So double plays is uh, really, really easy. So let's start over at uh, first base, okay? So first base, let's say there's a man on first, you're going to be holding the runner, all right? So you're holding the runner right here. Now, really easy, holding the runner. I see tons of players not do this right. When I'm holding the runner at first base, as a first baseman, all I got to do is be on the front edge corner of the bag with my right foot right there. So I'm just right foot on the corner bag. If this is the bag, my right foot's here, and I'm just set up right here, okay? So right foot on the corner bag. I'm not straddling the bag. I'm not back here in foul territory. I have my right foot on the corner of the bag, and I have my glove here waiting for a pick, all right? When the pitch is delivered, I shuffle two steps this way, all right? So pitch is delivered. I turn my body towards the plate and I shuffle twice that way right there. If it's a lefty up, maybe I only shuffle once, all right? If I'm afraid he's gonna hit the ball down the line, then maybe I only shuffle once. But if it's a righty, I should shuffle off two times. Once I get over here and there's no action, there's no, you know, it's a strike, it's a ball, the ball isn't put in play, then I shuffle back twice to the bag hard and I'm ready for a pick from the catcher, all right? So that's your job as a first baseman. Don't get lazy. Make sure you're shuffling off and make sure you're shuffling back. Everyone got that? That's really important. It's something I don't see a lot. I, I'm not saying first basemen are lazy, but I see a lot of first basemen that just, they're just standing around. They're not moving at all, okay? Just remember again, you're holding the runner on. The second baseman's over here. That's a big hole now, all right? And so if you're just going to be lazy and just stand there after the pitch, well, then you're giving them this humongous hole to hit the ball through, all right? Okay, um, one other thing. If it's first and second, this is important. I see this messed up at every young baseball game I go to. If there's a man on first, I'm holding him. If there's a man on first and second or bases loaded, I'm no longer holding him because he can't steal when there's a man on second base, okay? They can double steal, but he can't just steal second. So that's when I go behind the runner. That's when I go back here. So if the runner is right here in his lead, I'm behind the runner, all right? Not too far, maybe a couple steps behind the runner, I can still turn a double play if I have to, all right? But I'm giving myself a little bit more depth. I'm not going to hold them on. If you're holding, anytime I watch a game and it's first and second or bases loaded and I see the first baseman holding on the, the, the runner, the first thing that I think of is horrendous coaching. <laughs> so hold on one second. This Chips Ahoy guy is driving me nuts right here. Okay, so um, I lost my train of thought there because people were commenting ridiculous stuff. Okay, uh, but oh yeah, so I always think bad, just bad coaching, all right? So if you're a coach, just watch that. Sometimes coaches, I think, take it for granted. They think like, oh, my first baseman's gonna know how to hold the runner on. They're gonna know when to hold the runner on. No, don't assume that. That's the first thing I learned. That's the first thing I learned in coaching. Never assume anything. My first time coaching was in college, and I just went to college thinking like, oh, everybody knows all this stuff. And then I realized, wait, no, they don't know this stuff. So never take it for granted. Never assume anything. Just coach them. Okay. Um, so that's the first baseman. All right, holding with a man on first. Or first and third, as long as there's no one on second. If there's men on first and no one's on second, you got to hold them because he could steal. If there's men on first and second or bases loaded, I'm always behind the runner, all right? Okay, so that's first base. Uh, let's see here. 
Let's go over to second base. Second base will keep it real easy. If this is your natural depth right here, then you're just going to move in three to five steps and over about three steps. Okay? So when you're talking about double play depth, in really any situation in baseball, you have to be with, you have to give something up to get something. So in a situation where we have a man on first, hey, thank you so much, Metal Metallica. Um, in any situation where, all right, we've got a guy on first, we've got less than two outs, we have to get a double play, you have to give up something to get that double play. What are you going to give up? You're going to give up a little bit of range. So you're going to move in and over a little bit because I have to be able to get to the bag on a double play. If the ball's hit to my shortstop or third baseman, I need to be able to get there. There's no excuse to say, oh, I didn't have time. If you didn't have time, that means you're too far away. So wherever your normal depth is, come in about three steps, move over about three steps. Maybe it's a bit more, maybe it's five and five. Again, depending a little bit on your level, how quick you are. If you're a little quicker, then maybe you can get a little bit further away. If you're slow, then you better get a little bit closer. All right? It's the same thing for the shortstop. So double play depth, just come in towards the catcher about three or so steps and then move up the middle about three or, or three to five steps, okay? And that should put you in double play depth. Uh, what else? Okay, and then third baseman. So we talked about eight and, eight and six, so you're eight and six. Well, now you can just come back in. You want to probably come in about five steps or so, so you're just going to move in towards the catcher. Again, you've got to give away some depth. you got to give something to get something. you got to give away depth to come in here to be able to get the double play. If you're playing way back here, you're probably not going to be able to turn a double play. Okay? So everything is basically coming in, and for the middle guys, it's coming in and coming over closer to the bag. Uh, do you change on each pitch to see who covers the bag? Okay. Let's actually talk about that for a second. That's, that's a really good point. Let's talk about that. So when there's a man on first and there's an opportunity, obviously, for a stolen base, the middle infielders who are now in double play depth, right, unless there's two outs, but the middle infielders need to be communicating with each other to let each other know who's covering the bag on a steal, all right? Really important. So the basic rule is this. The basic rule that I think, again, I'm not going to assume this. I, I used to assume this. I'm not going to assume it. The basic rule is if a right-handed hitter's hitting, who's covered? This guy, second baseman. Why is the second baseman covering with a right-handed hitter? Because a right-handed hitter is more than, it's typically going to pull the ball. And so we want this guy, the, the opposite field guy, covering the bag on a steal. If it's a left-handed hitter, then the shortstop is covering, okay? Now, that's typically, oh, double play depth for lefties. Again, if it's a lefty, you're just going to maybe shift a little bit to the pull side. If it's a righty, you, you shift a little bit to the pull side here. So typically, it's going to be to the pull side, okay? Um, okay, so right-handed hitter, second baseman is usually covering. Left-handed hitter, shortstop's usually covering. Okay, that's the, bait, that's the general rule, all right? Now, there might be times in a game where the coach might look at it and say, you know what? A right-handed hitter's up, and typically we have our second baseman covering. But this guy weighs 72 pounds, soaking wet, and I haven't seen him be able to pull a ball all day because we've got our number one pitcher on the, on the mound. He's not going to pull a ball. So I don't want my second baseman covering. I want my second baseman staying home. I want my shortstop covering, right? So usually, like, my, my uh, signal to that is I just go like this, and that usually means, hey, flip the coverage, right? So I might whistle out. And I'll say, do this right here. That's just telling them, like, let's flip the coverage. I don't want the shortstop covering. I want the second baseman covering. Or I don't want the second baseman covering. I want the shortstop covering. Everybody got that? Now, if you're uh, at a higher level, these guys will make that decision. And so, depending on what level you're at, maybe you're a really smart player. You're really in tune with the game. And you realize that. And you say, hey, let's, let's flip the coverage. Usually the shortstop is going to be in charge of calling this stuff. But you work together. So how do you call it? How do you let each other know? What I like to do, I don't like to go, hey, hey, you are covering. No, no, I'm covering. Like that's, that, I don't, I think that's kind of Bush League. What you do is you just look over to your partner. So if I'm the shortstop and you're the second baseman and I want to cover the bag here, okay? Lefties up, I'm going to cover the bag. I put my glove up like this and I close my mouth like that. That's saying me. It's my bag. Because if you say me, you close your mouth. 
okay? If I want this guy to cover the bag, I want the second baseman to cover the bag, I look over at him and I put my glove like this so no one can see, and I go, and I open my mouth. Because when you say you, you, your mouth is open. So that's you. So if you're ever watching, next time you go to a major league game, because they won't show us on TV a lot, just watch the middle infielders, and they're doing this the whole game. It's, and they go every pitch. In the major leagues, They'll go pitch to pitch. Now, at a younger level, you don't really have to do that. You can just play it straight up again, right? So, right-hander's up. I want the second baseman to cover. I look over at him. Right-hander pitcher, I mean, right-hander hitter walks to the plate. I look over at him. I go, hey, Johnny. I go like that. I just give him the sign. That means you're covering, okay? Again, in the major leagues, in college sometimes at a higher level, they might go pitch to pitch. So, depending on what the pitch is, right, if it's a right-handed hitter up, Let's say it's a right-handed hitter and it's a fastball away and we think he's going to be late. Well, then I might, I might say, listen, you're not going to cover. I'm going to cover. But then the next pitch might be a curveball. He's probably going to pull a curveball. Then I might say, okay, now you're going to cover. So major league guys and high-level guys will go pitch to pitch. But we don't have to do that. But the basics is you need to make sure you're communicating with your other infielder who's got the bag every single time. All right? Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Uh, let's see. What else? The other thing that you have to do. Um, oh, so someone just asked, wouldn't that tip off the pitch? Uh, no one can see you do that. That's why you put your glove up like this. So you just turn, you put your glove up so no one can see. You don't just sit there and go oh, like that because then everyone can see that. So you just, that's why you put the glove up so that no one can see what you're doing. The, the hitter can't see what you're doing. The coaches can't see what you're doing. And, um, and you go from there. Okay. Um, Again, so someone just asked why every pitch, because you don't have to do it every pitch. You don't have to do it every pitch, but you could do it every pitch at a high level because a curveball is going to be pulled more often than an outside fastball is. Now, again, at the major leagues, they do it like that because the pitcher usually throws the ball where he wants to. At a young level, you might not want to do this because at a young level, you tell the pitcher to throw it away and he might throw it up at the guy's head. Okay, so this is probably for a little bit of a higher level going pitch to pitch. Now, one other thing I want to say, since we're talking about kind of double plays and guys on first base. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Unless you're playing the Astros, then they might be able to see your signals. I'm kidding. That's a joke. Um, okay, so now every single time there's a man on first. Thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate that donation. When there's a man on first, I need to make sure that I'm always, if I'm the shortstop, I always need to let the pitcher know that I have them on a comebacker if there's less than two outs, okay? So they need to know when the ball's hit right back at them, they're going to turn around and they need to know who's going to be here. Now, typically, I would say like 90 plus percent of the time, it's going to be the shortstop, okay? But it's not always going to be the shortstop. So let's say you're playing a team right? And, uh, or you're facing a hitter and this guy's a right-handed hitter and he's a big time power hitter and he pulls everything. And there's a man on first and your coach whistles out to you and says, Hey, the four hole hitters up. This guy pulls everything. I want you to play in the hole. And he pushes you way over here in the hole. Well, I can't, if there's a comebacker, I can't physically get to the bag in time for the pitcher to throw it to me. So in that situation, the second baseman is going to have to cover on the comebacker. But you got to get into a hat every time. Every time there's a man on first, right? So let's say we got a man on first. Here comes the next hitter to the uh, walk into the plate, and Mike's on the mound. I whistle in. <laughs> hey, Mikey. Hey, I got you on the comebacker. That happens every time in Major League Baseball and in college baseball. Every time. That's how. It's, that's exactly how it works. You whistle to him. He looks at you. He should be in the habit of doing that. And when he looks at you, I say, "I got you on the comebacker. Me and you," so that he knows that you're getting it. More importantly than that, you're just reminding him, because pitchers aren't always the brightest, that they, if he gets the ball, he needs to turn around and throw a double play ball to you at second base, okay? Now, this is also really important in other situations, like when it's first and second, all right? If it's first and second with less than two outs, you got to do the same thing. Hey, Mikey, I've got you on the comebacker. Because how many times have you seen a ball hit to the pitcher with first and second, and they take the ball, and then they try to throw it over here to third base, and the third baseman gets in, and he's trying to throw it way over here. No, just get the ball, throw it to second, throw it to first, double play. All right? So I'm always telling them. And if again, if I'm in the hole and I can't have it, then I'm yelling over here at my second baseman. I don't know my second baseman's name. Maybe it's Andy. And I'm going, hey, Andy, 
I'm in the hole now. I can't get the double play here with the pitcher. You've got him on the comebacker. Then Andy says, hey, Mike A, hey, I got you on the comebacker. Okay, sounds good, Andy. That's how it works. All right? Thank you so much, Ben, for the donation. I appreciate it. So that's why you got to be communicating all the time with your players. Okay. Let's see. What else can we talk about? Okay, let's talk about infield in for a minute. Um, when do you do tandem relays? We'll talk about tandem relays at some point. I don't know if we'll do it today. Now, let's talk about infield in for a second. So let's erase these guys for a minute. Erase him and erase him. All right. So let's talk about man on third. So we got a runner right here at third base. All right. And we're going to go infield in. All right. First of all, when would you go infield in? Let's talk about infield in. So infield in, basic thing is we're trying to cut the run down at the plate, right? So your coach tells you infield in. That means this runner at third base is our priority. He can't score. It's going to be late in the game. It's going to be a close game. We're either, you know, we're tied. Maybe we're down by a run or two. We can't give up anymore. Maybe we're up by one and we say, we're going to go for the win right now. We've got to cut this runner down, okay? So if the coach puts you infield in, this is the priority. Please do not. I've seen this happen before. They put infield in. There's a ground ball. And the fielder picks it up and throws the ball to first base when the guy's going home. That is a major, major, that is a definition of a boneheaded play. Okay? If you're the pitcher and it's infield in and you get the ball, you must check the runner before you throw to first base and make sure his feet are stopped and he's not scoring. I've seen that happen before in youth baseball. Infield in, ground ball to the pitcher, late in the game, tied 2-2. Thank you so much, Moises. I've seen it. Bases loaded. Man on third. Infield in, late in the game. Ground ball to the pitcher, and he throws the ball to first base and the team loses because they don't realize why we have the infield in or they're on the mound and they're just so into the they're so into oh i got to strike this guy out or i got to make my pitch that they're not seeing the bigger picture okay so that's the first thing understand why coach is putting you in okay now let's talk about when would you go when would you go in um typically you're not going to win with two with two outs right you're not going to go in with one out usually with one out is the time when you're going to go in most often all right with one out Third base coach is probably going to take a chance that he's going to, hey, a ground ball here. We're going to try to score on that ground ball, okay? Hey, Ben, thank you so much. Um, so with no outs, now keep this in mind. This is a little bit more advanced, and this might be more towards coaches than it is towards players. But if there's no outs, think about it if you're a third base coach, right, and you have nobody out, all right? If the infield comes in, you're probably not going to send the guy home on a ground ball, right? Because you have no outs. You've still got a bunch of chances to score. So you're probably going to say to him, hey, infield's in here. Stay here on the ground ball. you got to see the ball through, all right? So what I like to do with nobody out, if I, if I need to make sure that we don't let this run score, right? If we play back, he's going to score on a ground ball. What I'll do is I'll play something, I call it a three depth, where it's basically, it's not infield in on the grass, but it's, it's in, but it's just a little bit further back. It's in enough where the third base coach goes, no, we're not going to take a chance. But it gives our guys an extra few feet of range, right? So something to think about coaches that you can put in a three depth. But now let's go again to the four depth. I call it a four depth. It's just infield in, all right? So infield in means when my secondary is over, okay? So when I take a secondary lead, my feet should be on the grass, okay? Right on the edge of the grass, Right on the edge, right on the edge, right on the edge, right on the edge. Everyone got that? So I'm right on the edge of the grass. Now I don't have to start in, I don't have to start on the grass and then take a secondary because then it might be too close or I don't have to take my, my prep step, okay? So when I take my prep step, I don't know if I call it a secondary lead, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. My prep step where I'm just getting ready to move, okay? I don't have to start in. I can start just on the edge of the dirt. But when I take my prep step and my creep step, whatever you call it for your team, then I want to land on the edge of the grass. Hey, thank you so much, Adam, for the donation. Okay? So that's the most important thing. Be on the edge of the grass. Balls hit to me. My first instinct is I'm throwing the runner out at the plate. Okay? So I feel the ball, and I'm immediately coming up to throw the ball to the plate. All right? If I, if I see he's not going, then I just check him. 
I stop his feet. I make sure that he's not too far down the line. And now I make the throw to first base. Okay. All right. So that, that's really, really key. You got to make sure that you anticipate going for, stop his feet, and then throw the ball to first. There was another point I wanted to make, and I can't remember what the point is. Oh, I do remember now. Now, one thing, two things. Okay. Third baseman, you can help with this. So if the ball's hit to the shortstop, the first baseman or the second baseman, well, then you can peek over here quick and see if he's running. And if he's running, then you yell 4 4 4. Any position can do that. So if I'm the first baseman and the ball's hit to the third baseman or the shortstop, and I take a quick peek over here to third base and I see if he's running or not. And if he's taken off, I'm yelling 4 4 4. So that way the third baseman or whoever's feeling the ball doesn't even have to check. He knows, boom, I'm coming up and I'm firing four. Okay? The other thing you can think about is. Again, the third base coach is going to tell the runner what to do before the play. So he's going to say, go on contact, right? We're going to try to score. Or he's going to say, stay here, see the ball through the infield. We're not scoring on a ground ball, okay? So the third baseman tells the, the infielder or tells the guy at third. So now the guy at third, the runner at third, has to be ready to anticipate, right? So one thing you can do, if there's a foul ball, so here's the pitch, and the ball swung through or fouled off. Once you see it swung through, fouled off, look quickly at the, the, the runner at third because he's going to tell you if he was going or not. Because if he was going to score, you're going to see him go like this on the foul ball. And then you can look around to your other guys and be like, hey, hey, he's going here on the ground here. He's going. But if, you, if the guy fouls it off or swings through it and you look and the, and the runner is doing this, he's not going anywhere, then you know that they weren't going to go on the ground. So then you can let everybody know, hey, he ain't going here. And now, or just, you know, I don't have to rush with anything. I already know what he's doing, okay? So just think about that. That's like another, I don't know, step up in detail when it comes to this. But it, it will really help. All righty. Let's see. All right, the last thing I'm going to say with positioning. I know this is a lot of positioning talk, but I think this is pretty good stuff that most players don't ever think about, all right? Um, last thing, and then I'll, I'll open it up to questions for a minute. So let's talk about no doubles, okay? So one thing late in the game, and, and some coaches will do this. If you are a coach, you can think about it. If you're not a coach and you're a player, then it's something to think about as well. So no doubles, there's a situation where I can't allow this hitter to get to second base because he is either the tying run or the winning run, and we don't want to let that guy to get to second. We want to keep him at first base. So maybe we give up a single, but we're not going to give up a double, okay? It's called no doubles, right? Now, if you're no doubles in the infield, and I would say in professional baseball and in the major leagues, we would play no doubles a lot late in the game. Anytime you were like seventh inning or later usually, and it was one of those situations where it's a one-score game, and we don't want to let that guy get a double, uh, usually I would ask the manager or ask my position coach. I'd always say, hey, you want us in no doubles? Um, and then he would say yes or no. And I usually always knew the answer, but I would ask just to make sure. All no doubles is, is wherever your normally, normal positioning is. So say you're a third baseman, and we talked about eight and six, right? So say you're there. If we're in no doubles, right? Think about it. A ground ball to you, okay? Where can a double happen? If a ball passes you on the left of you, it's not going to be a double. It goes right to the, the outfielder. If a ball passes on the right of you, it's going to be a double. It's going to get down the line, or there's a good chance it's a double. So a no-double situation just means, yeah, I can go eight steps down the line, but I ain't coming six feet over. I might go eight down the line and maybe two over, right? But I want to defend against the double. I can't let anything go down the line. If I'm the first baseman, it's the same thing. If I'm usually eight steps and six over, well, if my coach says no doubles, then I've got to guard the line a little bit. If it's a lefty up, then I'm probably sticking on that line. I'm maybe two steps off, all right? I'm a, I'm a step and a dive and can't let anything get down the line. If it's a righty, maybe I'm over a little bit more. Everybody got it? So that's no doubles. Uh, and you can do that on your own if you're an infielder or maybe ask your coach, like, hey, coach, what's your thought about no doubles and late game situations where we can't let the runner get to second base? See what he says. He might say, what the hell's no doubles? <laughs> then you say, okay, then we're not going to do it. Um, all right. Um, so think about that. Okay. I don't know if there's anything else. I'm going to open it up to questions here for a second. Um, 
I covered pretty much everything there is to cover on infield depth, I think, right there. Is there any questions when it comes to that? Thank you so much, Rye. Rye. Uh, if there's someone on first, in what situation? You guys want some cutoff stuff? Okay, so here's a question. The outfield and no doubles. So the outfield, I was going to save outfield talk for another uh, video, but I'll talk real quick. I'll answer a couple of questions. So in the outfield in a no double situation, typically you're just going to move deeper. All right, so you're going to create easier angles for you. If you're shallow, well then anything, you know, in the gaps is going to be tough for you to get to. If I'm deeper, I keep everything in front of me. Now I limit singles. I can't, ball can't get over my head. If the ball is hit down the line, I'm a little bit deeper. Maybe I got a little bit better angle to cut them off, especially in the gap too. If I'm deeper, I can cut a ball off in the gap and throw uh, to second base. All right. Um, so that's usually, yeah, no doubles, just back it up. And uh, for our signal, whenever I played, our signal usually for no doubles was always, I don't know if you guys can see me, it was always this. So we just look out the out outfield and we say, hey, no doubles. That basically saying like, hey, nothing gets over your head here. You got to keep the runner off second base. All right. Um, also, as an outfielder, you have to understand, let's say that um, we got a man on second base. So here's another no double situation. Let's say we're winning by two runs. All right. Um, man on second. Hitter at the plate single to left field or single to any of you in the outfield. I've got to make a determination. Do I try to throw this runner out and risk throwing it over the cutoff man's head so this hitter gets a double or doesn't get a double but moves up to second base on that hit? Because now I was in a no, in a no double situation. Then I can't just come firing this thing over the cutoff man's head. I have to be really sure. Okay, so if I say, man, I'm going to throw this guy out, you can go for, th you can try to throw him out, but you better keep the ball low and cuttable so that we can cut the ball off. The last thing that can happen is you airmail a ball, this guy's safe, that guy moves up to second base, and we're supposed to be in a no double situation. That's when coach is going to politely talk to you about your mistake. Or depending on your coach, you might not politely do it. All right. Almost dinner time, guys. A couple people saying it's dinner time. Oh, I just, I think I just missed another super chat. Thank you so much. Let me just check real quick. Um, I want to make sure I don't miss anybody's. Hey, D Porter, thank you so much. Okay. So let's go, uh, let's go a couple more. And then if you guys enjoy this, I think the base, all the baseball people will enjoy this. Um, I can do, we'll do a, a few other things, you know, maybe a couple times a week we'll do uh, more videos. And I'm sending this to all of our Antonelli baseball players. Because uh, I just want them to be able to start thinking the game more. Cool. Uh, so I got a question. Throwing to the cutoff man versus throwing through the cutoff man. So essentially all that is, I mean, anytime I'm throwing the ball to home plate, if there's a situation where there's a batter runner, right, where this guy could, could move up to the next base, right? So... If it's a single on the ground, right? Let's say it's a man on second and it's a single on the ground. Well, that means that we now have two runners. We have the base runner, but we have the batter runner. And so in those situations, you want to throw the ball through the cutoff man, right? So I'm trying to throw the guy out at whatever base it is, but I need to throw the ball low enough that it can be cuttable. So I'm trying to throw the ball through the cutoff man's head. And this is where long hops come into play. Very rarely, watch a major league game, watch a college game. Very rarely do the outfielders get a ball and they throw the runner out with the ball in the air the whole way, right? Usually the ball is going to take one, we call it a long hop. So you want to throw the ball through the cutoff, man, which means it's low. The ball is going to bounce once and go right to the catcher. Thank you so much, vehicle ranks. That's a long hop. That's throwing it through the cutoff, man. The two things you don't want to do is, one, you just throw the ball 100 feet in the air like it's a grenade, because now we might not throw that guy out, but if it's a if there's a batter runner, he's going to move up. He as a batter runner, when you hit a ball and there's a throw to another base, so let's say there's a man on first and the right fielder gets it and he's throwing it to third. Well, as the batter runner, when I'm rounding this bag, I'm watching the throw and I'm anticipating that it's going to be a high throw first, but I'm reading it. 
If the ball is thrown high where I know that he can't cut that ball, I just keep rolling and I run right to second base. So that's what I'm reading. I'm reading the height of the throw, right? And so that's why the ball's got to be through the cutoff man. Because if the ball's through the cutoff man, I have to stop. Because if he cuts it and I just keep running, I'm out, all right? The other thing is uh, they asked, what does it mean to throw it to the cutoff man? The reason you don't throw it to the cutoff man is because um, very, very often, like usually... They're not relay men, they're cutoff men, right? So they're supposed to cut the ball off and redirect it someplace else. They don't, I don't call them relay guys because we're not going to take a ball. If there's a single to left field and there's a man on second, very rarely are we going to take the ball on left, throw it to a relay man who's going to throw the ball home and get him out. You're going to have to throw the ball to the plate with a long hop. This guy is here to cut the ball and redirect it to another position, not to relay it, all right? Very, very rarely do you see it relayed and thrown out at the plate. Unless you're at a probably a really, really low level where maybe the left fielder can't even barely reach the cutoff man. And the cutoff man, you know, maybe the base runner is extremely slow. But usually they're going to be cutoff men, not relay men. Okay? Um, the last thing I'll say about that, the only time you can throw the ball with some more air in it is if it's a sack fly situation. So let's say there's a man on third. And the hitter hits a fly ball to you with less than two outs, and it's a sack fly. Well, now you don't have to throw the ball through the cutoff, man, because there's no batter runner. There's no trail runners. If there's a trail runner, you got to be careful, okay, if there's multiple guys on base. But if it's just man on third, take that thing and heave it home. Your job is to catch it and throw them out. I don't care how you throw them out. You don't want to kick it in there. You want to, you know, whatever. Just throw them out. Don't worry about the cutoff, man. Metal Metallica, thank you so much. Um... All right, so the question we got was on um, catchers and uh, their signs. You know what we'll do? I'll take a note for that, and we'll talk about it next time. But usually when catchers are given signs, they're either given bunt defenses, they're given first and third defenses, or it's men on first and, and second, and they're telling the infielders, if these guys steal, are we going to throw it to the lead base or are we going to throw it to the trail base? So if it's a slow runner on first, we might throw it to the trail base and try to get him out. All right, we'll talk about that next time, though. Cool? All right, guys, so um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about. We've been going now for almost an hour, and so I need to go upstairs and eat dinner in a minute. So let's do this. Let's talk about really quick. Let's talk about bunts really quick. Let's talk about bunt defense for five seconds, all right? So let's just say that there's a, a man on first base, all right? And we're playing right here. All right. So if there's a possible bunt situation, I'm not talking about like the ninth inning and we absolutely know that it's going to be a bunt because in those cases, your team might run a bunt defense if you have a bunt defense. But I'm just talking about a situation where they might bunt, all right? And so we have to respect that. The third baseman has to be in on the grass, a step on the grass, all right? The, the first baseman's holding the runner on because the man on first. Um, what I call this for my for my guys in high school, we'll say I just yell out, hey, read the bunt here. Read it. He might bunt. Just read it. I, usually I just go to my eyes. That means read it. All right, we're not going to put on a play, but you've got to be aware of it. When I yell read it, that means this guy's got to come in on the grass. Okay? So let's talk about this from both, both perspectives for a minute. This will be the last thing we talk about. Okay. If there's a man on first base... So man on first, and you're the bunter. Where are you bunting the ball? I always ask players this. Not everybody knows this. If there's a man on first, and I'm bunting, I'm bunting the ball to the first baseman. Why am I bunting it to the first baseman? Because he's holding the runner. So he can't field that ball. I mean, the ball, he can't charge, right? He can't charge. If he charges, well, this guy's just going to steal. The third baseman has no responsibility. So he is going to be creeping, 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 creeping. If you bunt it to him, he could get a double play on that. Got it? So I bunt the ball to first with just a man on first. Now, if it's men on first and second or just a man on second, where do you bunt the ball? You bunt the ball to third base. Because now the third baseman has a responsibility. His responsibility is I can't just run in here because what if he steals? Then no one's there to cover the bag. So with a man on first, you bunt the first. With a man on second or first and second, you bunt the third, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, um, here's a basic defense for read it. Very simple, but 
sometimes players mess this up. If this guy, all right, we have a man on first, okay? Here we go. We see him square to bunt. I see him square. If I'm the third baseman, I'm crashing hard, okay? I'm crashing as hard as I can. I hope that he bunts it to me and I can get the force out a second and maybe even a double play. But he squares, I crash hard. If he pulls back, if he pulls back to slash, then I slam on the brakes and I just defend myself and I hope I don't get a line shot down my throat, okay? But I'm going to crash hard when I see his hands square like that. If he squares super early, if it's one of those teams that squares really, really early, start to crash, be under control because they might pull back and try to slash it down your throat. So just be under control. But if you see all of a sudden a late flash like this, boom, I'm taking off, I'm running hard, okay? So I'm running in here hard. Shortstop, you're in double play depth, so you're probably right here. Your responsibility with a man on first is to go to second base, okay? Second baseman with a man on first, your responsibility is to go to first base, all right? Guy holding the runner on at first, you're holding the runner. After he pitches, you go to turn the shuffle. You see that he squared the bunt. You can start to come in here, all right? Pitcher, your responsibility here is you're going to have any ball at you or to your left. So you're kind of coming on this angle right here. The third baseman should have this chunk of the field. The pitcher should have Adam or this chunk of the field. The first baseman will probably only get a ball. If this, this, bunt is bunt, if this ball is bunted hard past him, you can keep coming and getting it. Okay? Um, this, this video will be available for you guys to send to your players. I just got that question. This will be a public video. I'll let everyone do it. I was going to do it just for our team, but I figure that this is good for just the game of baseball. <laughs> um, Okay, if you're the first baseman and you're coming in and that ball's bunted to the third baseman or to the pitcher, well, then you can stop and you can get back, all right? But you, you, can, you have to communicate with your second baseman. The second baseman should always be there, okay? But if it's bunted somewhere over here, you can stop and you can get back to the bag. And then you're going to tell the second baseman, you guys are going to communicate. So when you're running back to the bag, you're going to yell, bag, 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 okay? So if you're the second baseman, you're running over here and you see the pitcher over here and he's struggling to get back, you just scream, bag, bag, bag bag get the hell out of my way and then you get on the bag and you catch the ball okay so you got to communicate on that but everyone got that so third baseman you're taking that chunk pitcher's got middle to the line first baseman is going to be late leaving the bag so he might not get there he'll probably get something bunted really hard at him second baseman's button busting his butt over here and this guy's coming here all right now one thing to make sure also in a bunt situation this is a little bit more detailed maybe a little more advanced but um this is important is that let's say we got a man on first and let's say that we have uh, a right-handed hitter hitting if a right-handed hitter is hitting mark hello mark stop writing hello if a right-handed hitter is hitting who's got the bag on a steal second baseman but it's a bunting situation okay so it's a bunting situation so the last thing you want to happen because if uh, some good teams might run a fake bunt steal so so you need to make sure a couple things. One, I don't want to be way over here in a bunting situation because then I might not get the second base or first base, okay? So we might want to switch that up right away and say, hey, you're going to cover in a bunting situation. Shortstop, you cover the bag. I've got to get over here because I've got to be able to get to first base on a bunt. Everybody got that? Um, okay, I think we're good on that. Okay, so now let's let's hold on a sec. Let's do one more and then I'll let everyone go eat dinner because I know it's dinner time. Some people are leaving for dinner. Okay. Um, let's say we've got first and second. All right. So we've got first. We've got a runner right here on second base. All right. We're still not sure if they're going to bunt. All right. So maybe it's early in the game. It's the first inning. Okay. Depending on who you're playing against, you might be playing against a small ball team. Maybe not. But if it's early in the game, I might whistle out and say, hey, they might bunt here. Read it here, okay? Read it. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just telling you, read the bunt. Okay, so in that situation, we're going to do the same thing, except now the first baseman, you're not, you're not holding, right? First and second. If you're holding, you're getting yelled at. You're going to be in on the grass, all right? Second baseman, you're in double play depth, but you're going to squeeze over a little bit towards first base. So maybe you're right here. Shortstop, double play depth, you're right there. You're holding this guy on. Third baseman, you're in on the grass, okay? Now, 
The, the responsibilities change now. Talk about the bunter again. The bunter, where are you going to bunt the ball with men on first and second? You're going to bunt the ball to third base because the third baseman has a responsibility. He has to be there for the steal, okay? So you're going to bunt the ball here. Now, what are we doing as the third baseman? Typically what happens in this play is runner squares, okay? Runner squares. Now this guy, everything flips. This guy is going to come crashing in really, really hard, okay? If he pulls back the slash, break it down and hope that you don't get your head ripped off, all right? So he's crashing in here. Second baseman is going to go to first, okay? Shortstop is going to go to second. Again, this isn't a bunt play. This is just if they happen to bunt. Third baseman, you can't crash hard again. Remember, you cannot crash hard because if you crash hard and they don't bunt and this guy steals, nobody is there, okay? So be careful. Some teams will run fake bunt steals to see if the third baseman's a knucklehead. And when they go to bunt, this guy goes, woohoo, I got to run in and get the bunt. And uh, no, you don't because now no one's covering and then they'll steal, okay? So just watch out for that. I'm not stealing. I'm reading the bunt. I'm in a read situation. So when I'm reading the bunt, what I typically like to do as a third baseman is I'm on the grass. I angle myself just a little bit so I can see the, the runner and I can see the hitter, right? So I can see both of them. Got it? So I know if he's stealing, but I'm also watching this guy for the bunt. Now, here's the bunt. Oh, let me get to the pitcher for a second, okay? The pitcher on this one, you're going to be taking third base line right there. Because the first baseman has this side of the field, okay? So first baseman has this side. Pitcher is taking that side. Third baseman, you're reading the ball. If this ball is bunted at you hard, so literally at you hard, okay? So just draw a line like that. It's got to be at you hard. If it's at you hard, you're going to come and get that ball because the pitcher is not going to be athletic enough to get that ball way over here. So that's where I'm reading it. If it's at me hard, I come and get it. I make the throw to first base. If it's not at me hard, if it's to the pitcher or it's to the first baseman, I'm going to reverse pivot. I'm going to get back to the bag, and they might throw me the ball. They could throw me the ball, okay? So I'm reading it. Now, one thing I'll say with this. I always tell a third baseman. If you are, if, hey, thank you so much, John. If there's any doubt in your mind that that ball's bunted at you, this because this is what happens. If there's any doubt, you have to come get the ball. Because the last thing you want to see is a bunt that is bunted like right there, okay? Everyone's seen this before. This has happened to me before, before my coaches yelled at me. The last thing you want to see is a ball bunted right there. And the third baseman goes, oh, that's not at me. And he looks at the pitcher. And then the pitcher goes, oh, that's to the third baseman. And he looks at the third baseman. And they both look at each other, and nobody gets the ball. And the ball just, doo -doo 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 -doo, just rolls here, and we've got bases loaded, okay? So when in doubt, third baseman, I would say, when in doubt, get the ball. If you don't get the ball because you tell me you thought the pitcher was going to get it and he doesn't get it, I'm going to be very mad at the third baseman, okay? Collect outs. That's the biggest thing when it's a bunting situation. Now, if you watch most Major League Baseball now and higher levels, teams are not bunting really much anymore, or very much anymore. Thank you so much for that donation, Rios. Teams aren't bunting as much anymore because they value the outs more than moving the runners up. So as a defense... I tell everyone, if they're going to bunt, I want an out. I don't even need you to get fancy. Just get me an out, please. They're going to give us an out. We're going to take an out, okay? So when in doubt, come get the ball. Got it. Thank you so much for that donation. The Makako. Um, yes, exactly. Take the out, say thank you. That's what I tell the guys. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, from there, you can do different bunt defenses and stuff. There's probably less bunt def defenses nowadays because less teams are bunting. Um, I heard that some major league teams now don't even practice bunting. When I played, we still practiced bunting, and there just wasn't a ton of bunting. I played in the NL, so there was a little bit more bunting. Um, but there's teams that don't even practice bunting. Bunting is almost going ex extinct. And I do think the, the bunt can still be used as a weapon. Um, but just a straight sacrifice bunt is going away a little bit. Um, but you need to be ready for these situations defensively because there are still teams that will bunt a lot, especially young teams, right? We'll play against some teams at young levels that they want to win so bad and they're like, well, we're playing against mostly 11 and 12 year old teams and they don't really know how to field that great yet and they might not know how to bunt, play, do bunt defenses. So we're just going to bunt all day long. You have to be ready for those teams. All right. Um, okay. 
That's all we have today. Thank you, everyone. We did an hour. I was going to do 30 minutes. We did an hour. Um, I hope this helps you guys out. So that was literally just a little bit of outfield cutoff talk and then some bunt talk. Uh, baseball is a game I think most people underestimate it as like this simple, easy game. But when you really get to know it and understand it, there's a lot that goes into it. Okay, so these are the type of things that can make a big difference. The biggest thing I'll say is think about this before it happens. You have to think about what am I going to do if the ball's hit to me? What's the situation here? What is the game call for? Put yourself, put your, your mind or put yourself in the, the shoes of the, the opposing team's coach or manager. What could they be doing here? And then you'll start to think, okay, possible bunt situation. All right. Where am I going to play defensively? Am I off the line? Am I on the line? Am I no doubles? All the stuff that we talked about today. All right. So that's all we have. Um, thanks for watching. We're going to do a bunch more of these since nobody can get outside. Um, and again, a really, really good time. Maybe you can't get out and do as much on-field stuff as you want right now or do any on-field stuff, but there's always something you can do to get better. And so hopefully that last hour right there helped you guys out. That's all we got. Thanks for uh, watching. And thanks to my daughter for uh, donating her whiteboard. I actually didn't tell her. Don't tell her. I stole it. Talk to you later.